Welcome back. This is the third video in the set of Microfocus CICS Web Service Provider from WSDL demonstration videos. In this video, I'll use Enterprise Developer to generate a CICS COBOL provider application from a WSDL file that describes a CICS web service. And then I'll generate a WS bind file that contains the SOAP to COBOL mappings that are required at runtime to handle transformations between SOAP and COBOL. To generate the COBOL application, I'll start here in the Solution Explorer and right-click the reverse.wisdl file, then select Generate Web Service from the Context menu. At the top of the Generate Web Service dialog box, several fields are completed automatically by default. The reverse.wisdl file defines just one service named reverse and defines just one port type, also named reverse. Some WSDL files define more than one operation, and the default is to generate for all of them. This WSDL only contains one operation, so I can either leave this on All, or use the drop-down and check the reverse request operation. Next, you can see that the default generation type is Service. This means that Enterprise Developer generates a CICS COBOL provider application to be run as a web service. In addition to generating CICS COBOL components, Enterprise Developer also generates a service interface file that describes the data mappings required to establish communications between COBOL and SOAP. This service interface file type is typically created using the Interface Mapping Toolkit and is not designed to work directly with CICS web services. However, using Enterprise Developer, you can start with the service interface file and generate its contents into the WS bind file format required by CICS. In a separate step, I'll show you how to generate the WS bind file. Once again, the default file name for the service interface file is reverse. Moving on, you can see that the default name of the generated COBOL program is also derived from the WSDL file. I'm going to skip over the rest of the program section for a moment and come down to this bottom area of the dialog. I want to generate a CICS COBOL provider application program, so I'll check the CICS box. Enterprise Developer supports both COM area and channel interfaces for CICS web services. As I hinted in an earlier video, I want to use the channel interface for this demonstration and also use its default container named dfhws-data, which holds the top-level data structure that's mapped to and from a SOAP request. And one more thing. You might recall in an earlier video that I showed you in the WSDL file that the data definitions for reverse request and reverse response each create an optional unbounded array structure. On this dialog, a value of zero in the inline array size limit means that no array is generated, which effectively disables the definition of separate data structures for container data. To enable the defining of separate data structures for containers, I'll change the value to 1, meaning that any array that occurs at least one time gets generated as a separate structure that can be used for container data. If I left it at 0, it wouldn't matter how many times the string occurred, the data structure would be generated in line and wouldn't be suitable for use with channels and containers. I'll show you an example of this when we look at the generated code. I'll click OK, and this generates a project subfolder named Rivers and generates the CICS COBOL source code files and service interface file in that folder. The generated reverse.cbl program file is what we call a skeleton program. The data structures are defined in the two copybooks and the procedure division in the main program just contains the input and output logic required for the web service. As expected, Enterprise Developer has given this program a program ID of reverse. The local storage section contains the data structures used by the channel and container. Notice this comment that indicates the beginning of the code required for the reverse request operation defined in the WSDL. The Reaver I01 copybook for input structures includes the data definitions required to complete the reverse request input PARMS data structure and also defines the container structure. 
I'll expand all copybooks within the code so you can see what it all looks like. So here you see that the code contains a separate array data structure for the container. This is because I set the inline array size limit to 1 before generating the code. If I had left it at 0, the generated data structures would look like this. Notice that the output copybook is nearly identical to the input copybook. This is because the input and output data uses the same basic structure. Here in the procedure division, this exec CICS get reads in the SOAP request from the container. Further down, the SOAP request is evaluated. If the operation name is reverse request, the program performs the WS op1 paragraph. As I mentioned way back in the introduction video, in the end, we want the web service to take a string as input, reverse it, and send the reversed string back as output. Therefore, this program needs to perform a function that reverses a text string. However, because the WSDL file I used to generate the program doesn't contain this logic, it's not present in the skeleton program. The area between these generated comment lines is there for you to add the logic required to process the data received, so this is where I need to add code for the logic that reverses the input string. Because the reverse logic is not directly involved in the production of the CICS web service, I'll add the appropriate code offline before building the provider application. Finally, this exec CICS put statement places the request response into the container in SOAP format, where SOAP picks it up. So that's the COBOL side of things. As for the mappings, I've now got a generated service interface file here in the project named reverse.svi. This file defines the mappings for the reverse request operation. However, for CICS to use the information, I need to generate it into WS bind format. I can do that from here. I'll right click the reverse.svi file and select generate WS bind from the context menu. The WS bind file is generated in the reverse folder. Now I'm ready to build the project to compile the COBOL provider application. I'll right click the reverse project and select Build from the context menu. You can see the progress of the build process here in the output window. So now I'll show you the output files. As you might remember from the last video, my build output folder is the load lib project subfolder. In Windows Explorer, I'll navigate to the load lib directory. And here you can see the generated reverse.dll output file. At runtime, both the compiled application and the WS bind file need to be in the same location. So I'll copy the generated WS bind file from the reverse subfolder to the load lib folder. At this point, my web service is ready to test. In the next video, I'll create and configure an enterprise server region on which to run it. Mm -hmm.